Hello, security pros, and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on today's ESA webinar, All Things Certificates of Insurance. This webinar will provide a practical and informative presentation that will guide you through the essential steps of requesting COIs with ease. Learn how to identify your needs, communicate effectively with insurance providers, and ensure you receive the correct documentation to meet your business requirements. I'm Hannah Boone, Marketing Director of ESA, and I am excited to lead this webinar here today. Before we dive in, I'd like to provide some tips for those of you joining us on your first ESA webinar. First of all, welcome. You will be muted for the duration of this session, but that doesn't mean we don't wanna hear from you. If a question or comment comes to mind at any point during today's session, click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen and on sure we save some time for your questions with our expert here today. We will also be recording this webinar so that you can re-watch the on-demand session and share it with your colleagues. Tomorrow, you will receive an email thanking you for your attendance today, along with a link to the recording. Also, don't miss out on the opportunity to join us at ESX 2025. It will be taking place on June 16th through the 19th in Cobb County, Georgia, home of the Atlanta Braves, and it is the premier event for electronic security and life safety professionals. With engaging sessions, valuable networking opportunities, and cutting-edge technology exhibits, ESX promises to be an unforgettable experience. So mark your calendars, June 16th through the 19th, and registration will be opening soon. We ESA realize that your time is valuable and we appreciate you spending some of that time here with us today. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Crystal Jacobs, Program Lead at Security America. Take it away. Hi everybody, thank you for joining and thank you Hannah for the intro. Um, today we're gonna be talking about certificates of insurance. Um, I, I know you guys know that it's something that you have to deal with day in, day out. Um, so just wanna pro to provide um, a little bit of an explanation about what's what's the purpose of certificates of insurance, as well as some key things to look at, as well as the ways to request them. Um, first and foremost, though, I always like to talk about uh, Security America and its relationship with the Electronic Security Association, which is, um, you know, Security America is owned by the ESA, who has been the largest trade association providing major benefits to its members, um, including valued resources um, such as the key savings programs, online certification and training. And so definitely the ESA were, were a huge promoter of that having been owned by them, but also um, every day that we talk to potential insureds, we always talk to them about the benefits of that ESA membership. Um, so first and foremost, what is a certificate of insurance? It's really, it's a document that's provided on behalf of your insurance company. Um, and it's to sit there and verify what insurance coverages you have in place. Typically those requirements are driven by, by contract. Um, but sometimes it's just simple. Somebody wants a proof of insurance just simply for you to even step on site. Um, and the primary thing that they're always looking for is general liability is, is the main one and then professional liability secondarily. So the key components of a certificate of insurance, one is the insured party, that's you, who's covered. Um, it's the insurance provider who's providing the insurance and that's the carrier themselves. Uh, and usually what people are looking for with those carriers is strong financial ratings. They want to make sure that um, you're typically with an AM best rated carrier who is A rated or better. And they there's a number that we provide them that um, they're able to look that up. The policy number, that's the unique identifier for your specific policies. The dates in which your policies are enforced. These are things that typically your customers will track so that when your policy does expire, they're going to be sending me or you a note that says, hey, we need a new certificate of insurance. And then obviously the coverage limits that are under each of the policies that are identified on the certificate of insurance. Common requests that we get on certificates are gonna be additional insured. Um, so with um, the additional insured status, for us as Security America, Every single policy we issue has these standard endorsements that are called blanket additional insurers. So there's primary three 
endorsements that are required. And two of them, it's going to be your twenty third CG 2037 and CG 2010 are two endorsements that not every carrier is going to attach, but are the most commonly required endorsements by certificate holders. So we go ahead and issue your policies with that so that when we get the request to add an additional insured, we can do so with ease and we're not having to charge you for that additional insured status. Um, but the language is really important on how that additional insured is indicated on the certificate of insurance itself. So we've had requests come in where it just says that it, they want certificate holder is listed as an additional insured as respect to general liability coverage. But that's very much missing a key component and can create some ambiguity. And you know we need that related to operations of the named insured because if we just say that they're an additional insured, it leaves the door open that we're covering them for things they're doing. And that's not what, what you want to do. We're trying to cover them for what's called vicarious liability, meaning you do something that they ultimately get sued. That's where we would pick up for them. It's still related to your operations, not their operations. So it's really important language. So when I get a request in from somebody that doesn't include that related to operations of the named insured, we are always going to add that to make sure that we're being extremely clear about how they are being included as an additional insured. The other is waiver of subrogation. Again, Security America versus other carriers, we include a blanket waiver of subrogation. Um, it's CG 2404 is the endorsement. And same as those additional insureds, it says as required by written contract or agreement, um, we're automatically including that on your policy. So again, when that request is made, we can very easily attach it to the certificate of insurance. Now, some cert holders are very specific in the language that they want on the certificate itself for waiver of subrogation. We have a standard that we do where we just say waiver of subrogation applies, we check the box, um, but that's not always acceptable. Um, so sometimes they'll come back to us and want us to state waiver of subrogation applies in favor of the certificate holder. And um, so as long as we have what the language is up front, then we don't have to necessarily issue revised COIs. Um, but that is very common that it's very common these two requests are, are made. Um, probably I would say 80% of the certificates of insurance we issue contain either additional insured waiver of subrogation or both. There's a handful of other requests that we'll get as well. One is primary and non-contributory. And this is typically contract driven. Um, but what primary and non-contributory means is basically that your policy is going to respond first. There is, if, if they have insurance in place, their insurance is not going to respond. It's yours. Um, so that's what primary non-contributory is for. There is an endorsement um, that we do attach with regard to this. Um, it's not something that is issued with the policy. So it is it does need to be issued um, when this request comes up. And the other is a per project aggregate limit. So on your policy has an aggregate that is per the policy, meaning for the entire policy year, this is the maximum that the carrier is gonna pay. Um, some companies will require you to have a per project aggregate, um, which means that that's gonna be a limit that's dedicated to the specific project being uh, worked on. Again, that's typically contract driven. Um, there is an endorsement that has to be issued and there is an additional premium related for the Security America program. Um, there is an additional premium that we do have to charge. It's $250 per project, or we can do it on a blanket basis for $750, which means that the next time this comes up, we're able to issue that endorsement without charging any additional premium because you already have it at that 750 rate. Um, so I do tell people if it's something that you feel like is commonly requested um, or you feel like you're gonna get this request further on, it's you know 500 more dollars. So um, you may consider doing it on a blanket basis. 
Um, the other is a 30 day notice of cancellation. And basically what this states is that um, we are going to notify the certificate holder of any kind of cancellation. Simply because somebody is listed as a certificate holder does not necessarily mean that we are required as an insurance carrier to notify them of cancellation of the policy. It's driven by this language um, and a 30 day uh, notice of cancellation endorsement that gets issued. Um, our policy only requires notification to the named insured. So you'll know on the cancellation notice under the certificate of insurance, it does say, should any of this been canceled, notice will be delivered in accordance with the policy provisions, which is just to the named insured. So we do, if they want to be notified as a certificate holder of cancellation, then we do have to have that language on the certificate. Um, requesting COIs. This is probably the fun part. There's all these different ways to request COIs and ways that they're going to come into you as well. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment to go through them. Um, we'll talk about online requests, email requests, calling third-party vendors, and how all of that integrates into Security America. Again, I'm being very specific to our program. Um, on the online request. So we have a portal that you can go through. Um, it doesn't, it's not a portal like where you have a login or anything. Um, it's a form that you complete on the website. So you go to securityamericains.com forward slash COI um, and you'll fill out this form. The benefit of doing it through the online portal is this is where you have that potential of having an automatic certificate generated, depending upon what information you enter into the form. Um, and when I say automatic generation, if it if it all meets the parameters, it will pop up with your certificate of insurance where you can download it and you can email it, print it, do whatever you need to do with it to get it over to your customers. Um, and because we developed the form, it gives us exactly what we need in order to issue the COI should we need to review them for any reason. So in order for auto generation to work under the online request, the two main data points that are the start of the entire um, process is going to be you having your policy number and your effective date. These are your unique identifiers um, that tell our system to push and pull the data needed to generate the certificate of insurance. So you'll need to make sure that you enter all of that. Um, and then on the certificate holder, the name as it needs to appear, uh, the address as it needs to appear. You don't have to put a contact name or an email, though if you want us to contact the certificate holder directly or email the, the certificate to the certificate holder, we do need that, that email information. Um, we will always include you as well. Um, so you fill out that. And then under the certificate details. This is what will determine whether or not an auto generation can happen. So you've already entered in your policy number and your effective date. So that says what pushes and pulls. And now this will say whether or not we're allowed to generate. Um, additional insured. Even if you need additional insured status, um, that can still auto generate. Um, if it's required by contract, you say yes, that's fine. It can still auto generate. Um, primary non-contributory, if you say yes, that stops my auto generation um, because that does require further review because as I noted before, that is an endorsement that we have to check. Number one, is it already on your policy or two, does it need to be issued? And a waiver of subrogation, if you answer yes, it will still auto generate. So really the only thing that draw, well, not the only thing, I'll talk about the other fields in a minute, but on this portion of it, um, what will stop auto generation is if primary and non contributory are marked as yes. Then we have the special certificate wording. If there is anything in here, it will not auto generate a COI. I know sometimes customers will send you over language that's needed. Um, and if, if they have specific language, put that in here. We have to review that because like I had said before, sometimes they won't include key components to wording that really needs to be on the certificates to ensure that while we are technically extending some form of coverage to them, we are limiting your liability under your policy by ensuring the language is correct. So if 
you have a certificate holder um, who is making a specific language request that is outside of just additional insured or waiver of subrogation, go ahead and put it here. If all they're requesting is additional insured and waiver of subrogation, you do not need to put that in the special certificate wording because by you marking yes on that previous field here and here, that generates a standard language that will automatically pull to the certificate. So I don't need you to complete this. Um, lastly is attaching a certificate of uh, certificate requirements. So a lot of times they'll send you either a sample COI or you'll want to attach a copy of the contract that shows the insurance requirements. If you attach something here for me, it's not going to auto generate because it's going to tell me that I need to review something to ensure that what we issue is correct going out the door. Um, but that's where, again, sample COIs are great, by the way. So please be sure to include them if they if they have sent those over to you. Um, the other way to request is simply just to email us at info at securityamericains.com. Just make sure you're very clear about the requirements um, on what needs to be indicated on the certificate. The best practice you can do is honestly to just send us whatever they've sent you, because that gives me an opportunity to review it and come back to you if there's something that either we can't match or maybe your coverage isn't currently at that um, at what they're requesting. And so we need to give you what what does that mean? And so it gives me an opportunity to fully review for compliance. If they are requiring copies of your policy or your endorsements, please make note of that as well so that when we issue the certificate, we can issue those. You can also just call us. Um, and I do say on this one though, make sure that you are that it's a pretty straightforward, um, doesn't necessarily have any, if it's additional insured, yeah, that's okay. Um, but you can just call us for a real quick COI, Rhett, myself, or Holly will pick up the phone and we can, you know, put the things in that need to be done to get that issued to you. So call us at our number 866-315-3838. Um, third party vendors. This is probably both. It, it's, I understand why people utilize these third party vendors on um, some can be really great. Some can be very frustrating. But the, when I say third-party vendors, these are the requests that you get from Certificial Vendor Cert, ICOI Tracking. Um, they're basically not your customer. They're acting on behalf of your customer and um, in trying to manage all their certificate uh, certificates of insurance from vendors. Um, it's typically an online system where we go in and we upload things. Some require you to upload things. They won't give us any kind of access. Um, what I don't like about these is they really do a broad brush approach for everybody. So it's saying you could be working on, on a job and your portion is, let's say, $5,000, but they will request $10 million in limits. And it really doesn't make sense. And so a lot of that, when, when they're doing that broad brush approach, it requires you to go back to your customer and say, hey, we got these certifi uh, certificate requirements and they just don't make sense for our job. And your customer has to go to the third party vendor and confirm that what you have submitted is acceptable. So it can create a bit of a process. And I really don't like that broad brush approach because it just do it doesn't make sense for everybody in every single job and in their involvement in each project. Um, you are also, that's the other thing, you are also typically not included on the COIs that get issued because we are uploading them into a third-party website. So if you want to receive a copy of the certificate that is being requested, and we would need you to tell us that, um, a lot of times these are vendors that like we're automatically getting the request directly from the third-party company. And so again, just make sure that you know that it's coming and you you want us to, to send you a note. Um, a handful of things to be wary of on certificates. This is the main one for me. Too many additional insureds. Um, I prefer to utilize the language as certificate holder. Um, we list them at the bottom and that's who the additional insured is. But so many times we get pages and pages of those that need to be listed as additional insurance. And we'll do it, 
but literally it's get, it gets kind of ridiculous sometimes. So we're certificate holder, property mon- manager, owner, his cousin twice removed and the dog, like it's, it's everybody trying to be listed as an additional insured. And obviously that opens up um, your policy to more people. Um, and that can be of concern. So when you're getting these requests or, or when you're getting these contracts where they are naming everybody down the line, I really encourage you to stop and look and ask the question of who are these people and why are they needing to be listed? Um, you know, the more that we can empower you to push back on those requests, it serves you, it serves us. Um, but again, it goes back to people just simply using that broad brush approach. They're taking a contract and, and it doesn't necessarily make sense for everybody to name all of these individuals. Um, so really just watch for having too many additional insurance. Again, it's not that we're going to de- deny doing the or decline doing the certificate, but we will, you know, we, we encourage you to question it and see if it makes sense. Um Limits and coverage requests that are not aligned with the value of the work being done. I talked about this just a couple minutes ago. Um, again, if you're doing a small install job and they're asking you for 10, 15 million plus in limits, that doesn't make sense. The value is not there. Um, so again, we lean on you to push back. I will arm you with what you need. I will give you the language that you need to to push back. But at the end of the day, you're the only one who can push back on those requirements with the customer. Um, And then note the additional costs to comply with certificate requests. If there is a legitimate increased limits need um, or per project aggregate limits. So I know a lot of people will, if there is an increased limits need, they will build that cost into the contract, into the bid. Um, so we're happy that when that comes up, we're happy to get you terms on, on what it's going to cost to increase limits. And we will always tell you what the per project aggregate options are, that 250 or 750. Um, and but, but just know that there are additional costs sometimes to comply with those certificate of insurance requests. What's different about us, though, um, from others is we're, we're not going to nickel and dime you. Literally, the increased request and the um, the per project aggregate are the only things we really charge for, whereas a lot of other companies will charge you for if you need to add additional insureds, um, if you need to do waiver of subrogation. There's even some companies that simply charge a processing fee for these things. So we don't nickel and dime you. We have these specific things that we charge for and that's it. Um, and we try and take care of a lot of it. If we see, let's say that you are you have a lot of per projects, we may talk to you at your renewal and say, hey, we had all these requests come up um, over the term. Is this something that we want to take care of at renewal? So you already have it built in and it's easier as the requests come up throughout the year. So um, the other thing is reviewing the contract submitted with requests. So we can provide you advice on how to negotiate the insurance requirements, send you the language that you need. I have helped insureds um, basically provide revised verbiage on contracts and um, to go back to customers and just negotiate those terms in your favor. Um, but that's that's what we're here for. So outside of certificates themselves or just simple insurance requirements on the certificate, send us your contracts. We're happy to review those for you. If you feel like there's any concerning language, put them in front of us. Happy to provide advice on that. Um, and lastly, we typically turn out turn around certificates in 24 to 48 hours. Um, sometimes they, they could take slightly longer if there are like additional endorsements and stuff that need to be issued. But we typically turn them around very, very quickly. And again, you always have the online platform that you can go in to um, do those automatic generated certificates. Uh, so what now? Um, any questions you guys might have? I know Hannah's gonna go over that, but um, as always, you can email us, go to the website, calls to go over coverage needs. If you have questions on certificates that we have issued or that you want issued or anything, reach out to us. We are here. It's Rhett and myself primarily. Um, and then we also have Holly on our team as well. So with that, Hannah, any questions in the queue? Yeah, it looks like we have a few questions here. So let me pull them up. The first question we have is, 
can you talk directly to the certificate holder who is requesting the information? Yes, with the insured's permission. So if you guys are like, maybe they're just not understanding the verbiage. We, we have this happen a lot of times. Um, I am perfectly happy with your permission to speak to directly to the um, certificate holder to explain and have them explain what they're looking for and tell us and us tell them uh, how we're able to accommodate. Awesome. All right. Another question that we have is what if I am bidding a job that requires higher insurance, but I don't want to buy it just yet. But I have to show proof of that higher insurance. Mm, totally understand. Um, this does come up quite a bit um, where you might be bidding a job, but you need to show, let's say you you currently carry two million in umbrella and they're requiring five mil and you'd only need it for this job. Um, so what we are able to do so you can at least show a is we do what's called a sample COI. So we will build a COI that has all that info over it, and then we'll put sample across it. So we obviously make sure that we're, um, we're, we're ensuring that it states that it's just a sample at that point, but that allows you to show them that you have um, the ability to have that insurance in place. Excellent. All right, and it looks like we have another question in here. Do additional insured certificates open our company up to any additional liability in your opinion? Yes. I mean, at the end of the day, when you take on um, that, you're taking that on through the contract as well, right? You're stating that you're, it's basically an indemnification. So you're stating that we're going to defend and indemnify you if something comes up related to our action. So absolutely, it does, it, it does expand you to more liability, which is why it's very important to make sure that both the language in the contract and on the certificate are clear that it's only arising out of your operations. Um, because if you like, you want it to be your fault that everything happens, um, to, to put it probably terribly, but you want it to be your fault. And that's when your policy picks up. So it certainly can expand your liability. Just make sure that your contractual language and the language on the cert is appropriate. Okay. Uh, looks like we have another question here. What if they are requiring copies of endorsements or policies? Just let us know. We will send those copies. Um, and you just have to be clear about it to start that we need to send it because otherwise we're going to do the certificate of insurance because you have those blanket endorsements on your policy and we're going to send it off. Um, and a lot of times they do want copies of those endorsements. So make sure that you note that on the request coming over that you need copies of it sent to them. Um, it's not uncommon to get a request for that. The um, the request that's less common but still not unheard of is a request for your policy itself. Um, and so, again, let us know and we'll be able to send that. I do have some insureds that do not want to provide a copy of their policy um, to customers. And that's, again, that's between you and the customer. So make sure that you have that conversation with them um, so that you can get that requirement waived. Great. Um, so it looks like that's all of our submitted questions. Uh, we do still have, you know, more time allocated. If you'd like to go over anything else, Crystal, or save more time for questions, or if you'd like, we can just close out right now and people can contact you directly if they have additional questions. Um, yeah, I think the, oh, I, I guess the one thing I would like to add for those of you who are current insureds um, of Security America, you know that the program has transitioned management. Rhett and I are now at Balance Partners versus being at U.S. Risk. We're still the same people that have always managed the program. We just have a different house, which is Balance Partners. Um, however, we are handling 100% of all of the requests that come in for certificates or increased coverage. Um, and so if you can be sure to send those to info at securityamericains.com rather than any other email that you have, um, to make sure that we get them and that ensures that there's no additional delays, um, because of it going to a, an outdated email. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much, Crystal, for your time. And thank you, uh, Security Pros, for spending some of this time here with us today. Feel free to reach out to Crystal or Rhett if you have any additional questions or inquiries and have a great rest of your week.